Well, you'll have to admit one thing. With a priest, a rabbi, and a minister here, you'll have to admit that the Booster League certainly knows how to hedge its bets. <laughs> <laughs> but the real reason we're here is to honor George McBride as Booster of the Year. Uh, he's won so many awards, I have no idea where he's going to hang this one. <laughs> but our hearts go with it, George. <laughs> Fellas, I, I, I really don't deserve this one, but, well, all I can say is thanks anyway. <laughs> all right, fellas, meeting adjourned. See you all here in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Father. Oh, say, uh, Ed, Ed, could I, uh, could I speak to you for just a minute, please? Well, sure. Hey, oh, congratulations. Oh, thanks, thanks. Say, Ed, are, are you handling a, a corner house out there on Oakmont Drive? Well, that's possible. Well, I wonder if you could check your office about it, uh, will you? I passed there this morning, and they were showing it to some Negroes. Well, all right, if it's important to you. Well, I don't want to cause any trouble. You know, I served on the Interracial Council, and I've always pushed hard for civil rights. Hmm. Oh, uh, hello, John. Say, did you show that house on Oakmont to a Negro this morning? Oh, I see. Uh, thank you, John. Well, we didn't just show him the house. Apparently, we sold it to him. You sold it to them? Yeah, a man by the name of Sloan. Well, look, Ed, what's the matter with you? Don't you even know what's going on in your own office? Calm down, George. You know that our company policy forbids discrimination. Yes, yes, but that doesn't mean you have to go out and sell a house to the first Negro that comes along. Now, who is this man? Where'd he come from? Well, drop by the office and check the record of sale. Say, uh, is your house near Oakmont? Well, no, but it's, it's not right next door, but it's in the same neighborhood. It's close enough. Now, now uh, this is just the beginning. You watch property values drop now. Not necessarily true. Oh, come on, that's poppycock. That's something that's put out by the Ford Foundation or one of those outfits that's always proving something. George, what's done is done. Well, there must be some way to stop him, Ed. They're going to start moving in here in droves. What'll we do? Well, if enough of them come, we can always move into their old neighborhood. Insight. Stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Insight. Like every other good thing, religion can be misused. It can be perverted. And when it is, the results are monstrous. In the Gospels, we find the Pharisees misusing religion. They used it to exalt themselves and despise other people. Their observance of the Mosaic law was letter perfect, yet they totally lacked its internal spirit. Christ our Lord was very tolerant of human weakness, but he was very intolerant of the Pharisaical mentality. You hypocrites, he said, the harlots will enter heaven before you. Authentic religious practice will be marked by humility and compassion. Any religious practice that does not express its love for God in the unselfish service of other men is false. It is repugnant to God. Napoleon Sloan. Napoleon. What kind of a name is that? Never seemed to bother Napoleon. Oh, Margaret, I wish you'd try and be serious. You know he even told Walker he was a Catholic? Well, that probably means he is one. He does have that right, you know. I don't mean that, but why doesn't he stay in one of the Negro parishes? I've seen them. They're fine. For heaven's sake, George, will you come and sit down? No. Realize, dear, that you don't know the first thing about this man or his family. Margaret, I don't care if he's an atomic scientist. He is the forerunner. He'll move in here. There'll be a dozen, and there'll be another dozen after that. And you know what can happen to the neighborhood then? <laughs> Would you want them living next door? Oh, I don't know. I think I could probably live just. Oh, George, once you get to know people, it's much easier to like them. Margaret, I am not a bigot. Now, you know that. I've always spoken out for, oh, for voting freedom, low-cost housing, equal job opportunities. But this is our neighborhood. Don't intend to sit by and watch it be ruined. 
For heaven's sakes, Georgia, you relax. You'll make yourself sick. Mm. You can't stop them from moving in here. We don't own the neighborhood. That's just the point, Margaret. We do own the neighborhood. I worked mighty hard for this community. Municipal fund drive, Boy Scouts, clubs, lodges, organizations of every kind, the church committees. This is a fine parish. We've got a lot of fine people living here. <laughs> Those plaques up there will show you just how hard I've worked. Mr. Sloan must have worked pretty hard, too, to be able to afford to buy a home in our neighborhood. Say, Margaret, I think you've just found the way to stop him. Anybody who buys a house has got to get a loan from a bank. Well, <laughs> that's the place to stop him, the bank. Hello there, Jerry. How are you? George, <laughs> how are you? Good to see you. Yes. Sit down. How's Margaret? Oh, fine, fine. Say, Jerry, I was wondering, when, when, when somebody makes a loan from a bank, well, any bank, is a record kept of the loan in some central file? No. Each bank has its own records. Oh, that's it. Well, you're familiar with all the local banks. I wonder if you could check out a loan for me. Oh, I don't know about that, George. I'd have to have an awfully good reason. Well, there is a good reason. <laughs> it's a loan to a Napoleon Sloan. Would you check the other banks for me? No, I don't have to. I authorized that loan myself. You are... But, Jerry, I... I, I mean, why? Well, for the reason any banker makes a loan, I think he can pay it back. Well, I, I don't understand. Do you know what he wanted that money for? Yes. It was a home loan. Yes, yes, but you know the house. Yes, I know the house. I had it appraised. That's not what I mean. Do you know where the house is located? Yes. I know where it's located. Jerry, that house is right in the middle of our parish. What do you think I ought to do? Take it out of the parish? The man qualified for a loan, and I granted it, that's all. Well, look, Jerry, how long have you and I worked together at the church, huh? Fifteen years, and Father's Club, Usher's Club, Holy Names Society. What does the Usher's Club have to do with my granting a loan? This is much more important to you than it is to me. You have three small children, and they're going to be in that parish school for years. That is, if there's still room for them to, to, to stay in. You know, five years from now, that place is going to be solid black. Don't you worry about my children, George. Jerry, this is serious. There's something you can do. Look, you could tell him that the, uh, that the board has reconsidered. You owe this to yourself, Jerry. You owe it to the church. You know, you remind me of an old joke about the man who is walking down the street and he sees a young Negro boy entering a church. And he says, hey, wait a minute there. We don't allow niggers in this church. But the boy says, I was just going in to sweep up, sir. Oh, well, all right, then. Go ahead and sweep up. But don't let me catch you praying in there. The loan stands. Father, I've been president of the Holy Name Society for three terms, longer than anyone else in this parish. Yes, I, I recall, George. They gave you a plaque or a trophy, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yes, they did. Well, I worked mighty hard around here. You know, that building fund drive, that took a bit of doing. And say, that, that, that summer camp program, now, that wasn't any sense. No, I've, I've worked hard, Father, and I take a great deal of pride in this parish. Well, so do I, George, so do I. Oh, of course, I know you do, of course, but you just don't see the danger. They're going to hit this place like a swarm of locusts. The place will be a rack and ruin. Uh, this uh, real estate that you're so proud of, George, this church, this school, this parish here, uh, is merely here to help people get closer to God. Now, if any man were barred, it would be far better for us to tear the whole thing down brick by brick. Oh, I, I'm not asking that he be excommunicated. I'm just saying he should stay in one of the Negro parishes. That happens to be wrong. Well, there were a lot of Negro parishes in the past. Was that wrong? Yes. Yes, I suppose it was. But it was never a deliberate attempt to restrict the worship of God. Now, neighborhoods developed in certain ways. Now, right or wrong, that's the way it happened. Father, be honest. Uh, how would you feel offering mass to a church full of Negroes? Now, just forget that you're a priest for a moment. Well, I can't forget that I'm a priest, George, or a Christian. And besides, uh, I, uh, I enjoy a full church to an empty one. Enjoy? It's not a question of enjoyment. We have a big investment in this parish. You, you know what'll happen to property values now? Nothing, George. Nothing will happen as long as everybody remembers that human values are more important. There is nothing more important than the welfare of this parish. But a parish is people, George. The people of God. And they fail God and themselves if they close the door to any other human being for any reason whatsoever. All I'm saying is that he can find just as good a house 
in his own part of town, or perhaps better even. Oh, George, Jesus of Nazareth was born in a stable just because nobody would take his mother into a house or an inn. Now, I don't think he'd appreciate it if I were to do the same thing. So you won't help, huh? No, I won't help, George. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't insult the dignity of another human being. I wouldn't violate his rights for anything in the world. Well, suit yourself, Father. But you know, I think deep down that you won't like it when these people start flocking in here. <laughs> if you wanted to work with black people, Father, you would have been a missionary. Well, that's not quite true, George. You see, when I deal with this primitive kind of thinking, I am a missionary. I have the highest respect for Negroes, and I salute their progress. I've got nothing but regard for men like Ralph Bunch and Jesse Owens, but what we're talking about here is not progress. I agree. Now, the three of us form the nucleus of a parents' club committee. I'll call a meeting later in the week. I hope it'll be a permanent committee. Oh, it will, it will. Now, in the meantime, I've stumbled on something that I think might help us. Now, this fellow Sloan is supposed to be a reasonable man, and probably a clever one, too, if he's gotten this far. You're too damn far for my taste. <laughs> have you seen the pictures of what the Negroes have done to Harlem? Of course, we must remember Harlem wasn't much to start with. Now, what I propose is this. We buy back his house at a profit to him. How? We each put up $500. We'll take over the Sloan loan, and he'll come out with a $1,500 profit. He should jump at the chance. Sure. Unless he's a troublemaker, and many of these people have become troublemakers. Uh, one thing. Hmm? Why the whole 1500 from the three of us? Uh, why can't we wait till the committee meets and spread the cost? Can't afford to wait to be too entrenched. The last thing we need is for him to get a good foothold here, huh? All right, agreed? agreed? Agreed. Now, we can't expect any direct help from Father Conroy, but I'm sure that secretly he does share our views. Oh, are you gentlemen leaving already? Yes. Yeah. Well, good night. Good, good night. night. I sure hope this Sloan guy listens to reason. Oh, he will, he will. And in the long run, he'll be grateful. I doubt it. That's the irritating part. You try to help people and they seem to resent it. <laughs> well, good night, fellas. I'll get Margaret busy on the phone rounding up that committee. Good night, George. If Father Conroy secretly agrees with you, it's very, very secret. Well, just what does that mean? I think it means I don't believe you. Now. I didn't say that he agreed with us. I, I, I said I thought he agreed with us. What's put you so much on edge? I don't think it's fair you're trying to tie the church into something like this. This is your own private plan for trying to improve the lot of the Negro, not the churches. Margaret, sometimes I just don't understand you. Sometimes I'm afraid to understand you. And don't ask me to call up your committee for you, because I won't do it. I couldn't, George, not for something like this. George, we've worked together over the years. We've fought problems together side by side, but they were problems. This is people. Margaret, don't you see that I'm doing this for you and the children just as much as anybody else? Well, if you really want to help us, forget it. Stop hounding these people. You don't e You don't even know them. I'm looking for Mr. Amory Sequist. You found him. Well, I'm George McBride. Insurance broker. I'm sorry, Mr. McBride, we're well covered. No, it's another matter I want to talk to you about. We're a small, privately owned organization, Mr. McBride. We're carrying quite enough insurance now. Well, being privately owned does make it easier. You have a man named Sloan working for you. You know he's moved into an all-white neighborhood. Oh, uh, really? Well, I... <laughs> I know it's not your neighborhood, but... I imagine how you'd feel. I have no feelings about it one way or the other. What can I do for you? Well, we have formed a committee to ease him out. Painlessly, of course. Hmm? How do I fit in? Our committee has, uh, well, we, we're able to buy him out at a profit to him. But before we spend all that money, we thought you might be able to help us. You see what I mean. He works for you. Uh, couldn't you suggest to him that he'd be, well, happier somewhere else? You mean fire him? Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. He's protected by a union. No, no, that wouldn't be necessary. What I mean to say, Mr. Secret, is... Mr. McBride, Sloan's worked here for 15 years. He started as an office boy, and now he's my assistant. He's a good worker. In 15 years, he'll be eligible for a good pension. That is just what I mean. He's got a lot invested in this job. He's not apt to want to throw that over. What are you worried about, Mr. McBride? 
Sloan already has a wife. He can't marry a sister. I wish you'd realize that I'm only doing this for his own good. Mr. McBride, Sloan is a good, energetic worker, and that's all I'm interested in. Where he lives is obviously his problem, not mine. Excuse me? Hello? Yes, this is she. Another one of those calls? It must be the tenth since yesterday. Why must people be so cruel? Try not to let it get to you, dear. We knew there would be bigots when we moved here. We expected some of this. Yes, but coming face to face with it. Well, it's a small price to pay for what we have. Nice, quiet neighborhood, fine parish, good school for the children. I guess you're right, darling. I won't let a few phone cranks get us down. That a girl. It's the front door, honey. I'll get it. Oh, Mr. Sloan? Yes. I'm George McBride. My card? Uh, I'm uh, one of the parishioners. Huh. May I come in? Yes, do come in. Uh, Martha, this is my wife, Martha. I'd like for you to meet Mr. McBride. How do you do? How do you do? Would you like some coffee? Love some, dear. Uh, uh, what I have to say is rather difficult, so I thought I'd, I'd best come and talk to you directly. Uh, Mr. Sloan, I'm sure we can speak in a civilized way. You have moved into an all-white neighborhood. Yeah. There do seem to be a lot of them around. <laughs> well, I, I want you to understand that what I have to say, well, I'm saying only for your own good. I'm really very concerned. Concerned? About what? I, I don't follow you. Well, a group of the parishioners have gotten together and, well, they just don't want to see the community busted out. You mean they don't want Negroes living here? Yes, uh, that's it. And, and I've come to give you the facts. They have even raised $1,500 to help you. To help us move out, or else? Oh, well, not or else in a positive sense of taking any action, Mr. Sloan. No, it'd be sort of a negative thing. You would be ignored, snubbed, isolated. Now, you have three children, and it could be very rough on them. You know, young people can be so cruel. Well, I talked to Sister Mary Virginia about getting the children in school. She seemed very nice. Oh, yes, we have some very nice people in this parish, Mrs. Sloan, but I tell you now, the majority of them have very strong feelings. You see, we are sort of a close-knit community. We've, we've all lived closely together, raised our children together, and, well, uh, the fact is, you just, you just wouldn't fit in. Uh, you know, in the church groups, parish organizations. You, well, what you're saying is that uh, we would never be a part of them, of, of this parish, really. Well, th that's it, that, uh, in a nutshell. Now, I persuaded them to be reasonable, uh, but if they were pushed to the wall, I'm afraid they could use pressure. So, for your own sakes, please, reconsider. Hmm? Tell your committee that we'll, we'll think about it. Good, good. I, I always think it's best to settle these things without any strife, don't you? And I'm sure we can make some adjustment for all the trouble you've been put to. <laughs> I know that moving does cost money. Well, thank you. Good night. And I'm sure that we can make some adjustment for the trouble that you've been through. That isn't a neat package wrapped in a big fat ribbon. He didn't even drink his coffee. Oh, damn his coffee and damn you. All of these years, these hundreds and hundreds of years, for what, Martha, I ask you, for what? I'm sick to my stomach, sick through and through. Oh, honey, I, honey, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking, I, I didn't mean what I said. Hush, you're entitled to lose your temper in your own home. What are we going to do? Martha. Martha, I, I, I just don't know. Alone I, alone, I could take it. Alone? Well, what about me? 
together we could stick it out. I know it wouldn't be easy, but, well, together we could do it. Martha, Martha dear, we planned this carefully. We knew it wouldn't be easy. We, we weren't hasty, were we? No, we planned everything. The budget, the children, the parochial school. Ah, uh, that's the one thing we didn't count on. We expected crank calls and things like that, but, but we never figured it mattered being black Catholics. Well, are we gonna move? Martha, I, I don't know. Well, what about the children? Do you want to raise them being bullied, ignored? Darling, we taught them to love. They wouldn't understand hate. Do you? Does anyone for that matter? Although I think if I had to live with nice guys like, like McBride, I, I soon would learn to understand it. You know, for one brief moment, I hated that man. And who needs it? Well, I, I just can't tell the difference between right or wrong anymore. Discussion closed. Tomorrow is soon enough to decide. And by the way, did I ever tell you that I, I love you, Mrs. Sloan? You can call me Martha. And you know, well, what I said, I, I... Temper, temper. What do you mean you're thinking of moving? Well, it's simple enough. I'm thinking of paying off the loan and getting out. I don't think this is for us. Why the sudden decision? Uh, Mrs. Sloan and I had a visitor, a man named McBride. Oh. He said the people in the neighborhood, in the parish, really, he said that they didn't want us. Sit down, Mrs. Sloan, please. Now, that's a lie. There may be a half dozen dingbats who don't want you, but I can assure you the majority of the parishioners do not feel that way. But I talked to the man. I know what he said. Mrs. Sloan and I can take a lot. But to be shut out from our own parish, not to be able to, to participate, to, to do our share, we can't take this. Well, I think I know what I'm talking about, and I'm telling you this. You've got no business moving out of that house. Please, Mr. Leahy, you're not a Negro. You don't know how uphill things are. I know I'm not a Negro, but you don't have to be a chicken to spot a rotten egg. Sure, things are uphill. That doesn't mean you've got to run downhill. Well, it won't be as bad as you think. Actually, my old neighborhood was, was pretty nice. You should see it. Your old neighborhood was a ghetto. You told me that yourself. I thought you wanted to get away from all that for your wife and your children. I did. There's no reason for that kind of living anymore. Well, then stick this out. Not if I have to fight to be a member of my own parish. As Catholics, ghetto or no ghetto, we weren't just raised that way. As Catholics, neither were we. But how do you expect anyone to help you if you don't help yourself? You've got no reason to move out of that house, Mr. Sloan. Sloan was very gracious and he readily understood our point of view but we cannot afford to relax this committee must continue to operate continue to be vigilant the next time it might not be so easy the next one might not be quite as willing to move as sloan was uh, just to keep the record straight he's not moving <laughs> wait what do you mean he's not moving well i don't know how i could be any more clear not move, a negative form of the verb move. He's not moving. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I do. Thank God. And another thing, do you people realize that this meeting is not authorized? Do you realize that the pastor knows nothing about this? I thought you said you spoke to Father Conroy about this, George. I, I spoke to him, I spoke to him. No need to bother him with every little detail. You mean to tell me he doesn't even know this meeting is taking place? I assumed he knew. He's a very busy man. Jerry, I know that you and I don't agree on this issue, but I have a right to be heard. I have served this parish. <laughs> the building fund, the ushers club. <laughs> George, if you tell me once more about what a great usher you are, I think I may vomit. There's no need to be abusive. I've tried to serve the best way I could. And I'm sick of all this endless slop about how much you've served. You never joined anything to serve. You work for yourself, not for God. Sure, you join all these committees so you can sell more insurance. But I, I really wonder if you'd ever join an organization that didn't hand out plaques. George, you said you had this all worked out. But if it means any kind of trouble, I want out. 
Jerry, there's no need to make a big fuss about this. No need to... What's the matter with you people? You realize this meeting is being held on the property of a Roman Catholic church? A church that's dedicated to the dignity of all men. A church with dozens of black saints. A church founded by Jesus of Nazareth. God become man, a brother to all of us. What do you think Calvary was all about? It wasn't some cheap charade by a demented Jew. It was the Son of God promising love and devotion to all of us. Now, he wasn't hair-splitting up on that mountain. He was dying. And you people have the guts to sit here and second-guess God Almighty? I should have spoken up sooner. I've listened to George's drivel for the past 15 minutes, and I feel nothing but shame. I'm sure the rest of these people feel the same way. You insult the dignity of another human being, any human being, and you insult Christ. You sin, just as much as if you run off with another man's wife or steal her car. You're darn right. Maybe this parish needs the Sloans. I just don't understand this new way of thinking. I've always worked hard for Negroes, but this new thing of pushing in and causing trouble, Margaret, I don't understand. I know you don't, George. Let's just hope that maybe our children will. Like many of us, McBride thinks his faith in God is authentic. We now know it isn't. Why? Because he's closed his heart to a fellow human being. The love of God and the love of neighbor are inseparably linked. Each human being is made in the image and likeness of God. White as well as black are members of his family on earth. If you really love God, you will love your neighbor. And if you don't love your neighbor, it's a sign you don't love God. You cannot claim God for your father unless you're willing to accept all men as your brothers. The man who says he loves God, St. John says, but hates his brother is a liar. Racial discrimination is incompatible with authentic religious faith. You can choose one or the other, but you can't have both. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.